Mike Abstey for Botest.com, and today we're going to be conducting a performance review of the next yacht in the luxury series from Sea Ray, the L590 Fly. This one is powered by Triple Zeus Pods, so let's start with a look at the engine room. There are two access points. First is here in the cockpit. A set of steps leads to the aft end of the engine room just over the pods. A second access point is right in the main salon, and this one leads to the front of the engines as well as the standard 21.5 kW generator. So for daily checks, this is the one I'd select. Just ahead, each engine has dual filters with crossover valves for making changes on the fly. In the forward companionway is the cabinet with the ship's power panel. At the top are the generator controls, then the two 40 volt breakers, then the 120 volt, to the bottom, the 24 volt, then the 12 volt. Let's move to the standard lower helm. Overall, Sea Ray is quite proud of this panel and has completely redone the design for this boat. It went with a panel that shows no fasteners. The screens are mounted to what's called a fast mount system. It's a socket and pin system that's attached to the back of the panel. All the displays are recessed into the ebony panel so it has a much cleaner look. Sea Ray also added standard helm air conditioning. There's a leather wrap visor just above to knock down glare, and the dual stid helm seats are standard. Now let's move to specifics. We have two 16-inch displays with a vessel view monitor in between. 12-inch displays are also offered. The joystick is to starboard with the display controls just ahead and then the digital engine controls. Now from the flying bridge helm, we are on the opposite side from the lower helm. Now we're controlling from the port side, so whichever side we plan to dock on, we can have excellent visibility. Up here, there's a windscreen that did a marginal job of blocking the wind, and certainly the turns are more pronounced with this higher center of gravity, but they were still comfortable. Sea Ray went with a pod style helm with a pair of 12 inch displays offered as an option. Again, the vessel view monitor is in the center. Controls are now to the left, the joystick is still behind the engine controls. So let's see how she performs. The L590 has a length overall of 58 feet 10 inches, a beam of 16 feet, and a draft of 57 inches. With an empty weight of 64,000 pounds, full fuel, and six people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 71,744 pounds. With the triple 600 horsepower coming Zeus maxing out at 3020 RPM, we found our best speed at 31.1 knots. At that speed, fuel burn was 97.3 gallons per hour, giving a range of just over 300 nautical miles. That also turned out to be the most economical speed, and interestingly enough, the nautical miles per gallon remained unchanged from 1750 on up to that top speed. So that should put to rest any concerns about the effectiveness of the triple engines. Of course, it's not a good idea to constantly push the engines to the max load at all times, so we pulled them back to the recommended cruise setting of 80% load. That came in at 2600 RPM and 22.5 knots. Now the fuel burn was a more sedate 71.7 gallons per hour, and the range fell to just under 300 nautical miles. What all this means is the power is so well matched to the hull that we no longer have to concern ourselves with performance and can instead adjust our speed to more match the prevailing conditions. We'll still be getting the same performance with regards to miles per gallon at anything above planing speed. With triple engines, there's the question of which engine kicks in at what time. The key to remember is the center engine is the last one to kick in and the first one to kick out. When you bring one throttle forward, that engine comes online. When you bring the second throttle forward, first that outboard engine comes on, then the center engine comes online. When you bring it out of gear, the engine in the center comes out first and then the two outboard engines come offline. Now for some observations from the lower helm. When turning, she rolls 18 degrees into the turn and then her weight takes over and she levels out to a more sedate five degree lean. Part of the great handling characteristics that we're getting on the L590 are the reduced throw of the pods at high speeds. Cruise speed, when we put it hard over into a turn, she came around in about 35 seconds, 360 degrees, and did it in roughly four boat lengths. Remained docile the whole time, so nobody on board is gonna find that uncomfortable, no matter how heavy handed the captain gets. We had to work at it to get some spray to come over the boat, and because we have a little bit of a windy day, all we had to do was take it just a little bit off of the bow, let the wind pick up that spray and throw it into the windshield, but for the most part, it's a dry ride. The sound levels are also very quiet. When you're running this boat from the lower helm station, it's like driving in your living room. Wave penetration is also another plus on the L590. You brace yourself for an impact that just never comes. She slices cleanly through the waves. She accelerates slowly and comfortably while the engines spool up and the turbos kick in. We reached planing speed in 11.6 seconds and cruised through 20 miles per hour in 13.2 seconds. Of course, the visibility aspect of the upper and lower helms is further alleviated with the addition of the optional cockpit control station. 
Now the real shining star of this test was the low speed maneuverability and docking in close quarters. At low speed, she's very responsive to the helm. It can clearly be felt that we're not dealing with props and rudders here. When the turns got real tight, I found myself taking the engine to the inboard side of the turn out of gear to increase the turn a bit, and she responded accordingly. At the dock, she's a real performer. With the joystick functionality, anyone can look like a pro. Just use small pulses of control with the stick and start her moving in the direction you want. Then, use those pulses to control the momentum. Slow and steady is the best way to handle any situation, and in a yacht like this, even more so. But it's quite easy, and she answers well. We ended up laying her alongside with a full view from the flying bridge with perfect precision. Now the other thing is, when you're coming into the dock, if you happen to have a bad day and lose one of the outboard engines, the inboard engine will take over the functions of that outboard engine and you'll still have the same functionality. Frankly, the concern about whether she can be handled by an owner-operator is a non-issue. We're also impressed with the economy of the Triple Zeus drives in that there's no longer a concern with the running parameters. That leaves a lot of worry back at the dock, making a much more enjoyable experience on the water, just as it should be. And that's my performance evaluation of the new L590 Fly from Sea Ray. For Boatest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.